Freshwater Fishing for Kids by Melanie Howard. Chapter one, The Green-Eyed Monster. Your fishing pole tip dips. It's barely a tug. Maybe it's the bait bouncing off the bottom of the lake. But reeling in your fishing line, you spot a tiny walleye skimming the surface of the water. The fish is barely bigger than your bait. The walleye is halfway to the boat when you see a V shape slice into the water. Suddenly, the little walleye is dragged beneath the waves. You almost lose your grip on your pole as the line runs out with a high whirling noise. A great weight yanks against you. You brace the butt of the rod against your life vest. Your fishing pole nearly bends in half. You reel in, fighting the rod tip up out of the water. Grandpa grabs the net. A large northern pike glares up at you from just beneath the surface. Then the fish dives under the boat. With a great heave, you haul the pike back to the surface. Grandpa scoops the net into the water and flips the northern pike into the boat. The pike isn't hooked at all. Its teeth are clamped into the, onto the walleye. Grandpa grins at you and you grin back. Look at that green-eyed monster, he says, clapping you on the back. The pike is longer than your arm. It's a keeper. We have a fun fishing fact here. In 2008, North Carolina's channel catfish record was broken by a man and his granddaughter fishing with a toy Barbie doll rod and reel. The fish was two inches longer than the rod. Starting with sunfish. Anglers new to the sport often start by fishing for sunfish. Sunfish come in many varieties, such as pumpkin seed and green. Bluegill, crappie, and black bass also belong to the sunfish family. Most sunfish reach a size of less than 8 inches long, but a black bass can be as long as 32 inches and weigh up to 22 pounds. Sunfish can be caught on simple weighted baits called jigs. They can also be caught on spinner baits, but often an angler will catch one using a float. This technique is also known as bobber fishing. When bobber fishing, the angler keeps an eye on the float, or bobber. The bobber dangles a baited hook at a set depth in the water. If a fish hits the bait, the bobber will be pulled underwater. The angler sets the hook when the float plunges underwater. Casting a bobber in a shallow area where there are weeds or sunken logs is a good way to catch sunfish. Sunfish are usually found in water that is less than 30 feet. All on the line. People have been fishing for thousands of years. It was an important source of food. The first fishers used hooks made of bone, wood, or stone. They tied the hooks to the vines and pulled them by hand. The ancient Egyptians fished, so did the Greeks and the Romans. The Chinese fished with bamboo rods and silk line as early as the 400s BC. Fishing for sport started in the 1400s. People who fish for sport are fishing for fun and not just food. Since it began, sport fishing has grown more popular. It's become a tradition in many families. It also has inspired many TV shows, and led to an explosion of modern fishing equipment. Many competitions and records have sprung up around sport fishing. Freshwater fishing is fishing for food or sport in bodies of water such as rivers and lakes. It is very popular in the United States. In fact, freshwater fishing has a Hall of Fame in Hayward, Wisconsin. The Freshwater Fishing Hall of Fame and Museum displays equipment used for freshwater fishing over the years. It also keeps records of famous anglers and the largest freshwater fish caught around the world. I've got another fun fact here. More than 50,000 people visit the Freshwater Fishing Hall of Fame and Museum in Hayward, Wisconsin every year. Chapter two, hook, line, and sinker. Modern fishing has come a long way from stone hooks and vines. Today's freshwater anglers use a variety of fake baits and equipment, such as sonar fish finders. 
A fish finder usually tells an angler the water depth. It also shows fish swimming in the water. Freshwater anglers try to catch many kinds of fish. Many people enjoy fishing for large, more, large mouth bass because these fish are easy to catch. Reel them in. Most freshwater fishing is done with rods that go with bait casting, spin casting, and spinning reels. Rods used with bait casting reels are very stiff. They allow an angler to cast heavy bait more easily. A rod used with a spin casting reel is similar, but it is meant for lighter bait and line. A rod used with a spinning reel is different. This rod's reel is mounted underneath the rod instead of on top. It is less ideal for casting, but is more sensitive to fish strike. A rod and reel should be chosen based on the kind of fishing you are doing. For example, if you're fishing for walleye with a jig, you should use a spinning rod and reel. Then you can feel when the fish bites. Experience also matters. It's much easier for an angler with little experience to cast using a spin casting reel than a bait casting reel. Going after large or tough fish requires more strength, patience, and skill. The equipment needed is also more varied. The white sturgeon is the largest freshwater fish in North America. It can grow as big as 1,500 pounds. To catch it, an angler may need a heavy duty sea fishing rod and reel. Large catfish also require a sea fishing rig. Casting. Unless you drop your bait straight over the side of the boat or dock, an angler must know how to cast. A cast is usually done overhead, but other types of cast include horizontal, underhand, and flip. A good cast needs two things accuracy and distance. The best way to learn both is to practice. You can practice casting before you even go out on the water. Set targets such as hula hoops out in your yard. Fit your line with a casting weight instead of a hooked lure. See if you can cast the weight into the middle of the target. You should try to cast at least 25 feet. With practice you'll likely be able to cast 50 feet or more. Getting a feel for when to release the line and still hit your target is something every angler needs to learn. To cast accurately, keep your eyes on the target. You're less likely to cast to the left or to the right of the target if you keep, your, if you keep looking at it. If you're casting a bait that sinks rather than floats, Reel in faster when the bait hits the water to avoid snagging it on weeds. Then slow down after about six feet. The farther the bait gets from shore, the deeper the water usually is. When you slow down as you are reeling in, the bait begins to sink. This catches the attention of fish swimming in deeper water. Baiting the hook. Like other fishing equipment, bait should be chosen based on the type of fish you want to catch. For example, you should not use a deep diving plug with two sets of hooks to catch sunfish, but you might for musky. You would not usually bobber fish for northern pike, but many people bobber fish for trout. When it comes to fake and natural baits, the choices seem endless. Corn, crickets, shrimp, salamanders, eggs, frogs, and even squid can be used as bait. Baits that work for several kinds of fish include leeches, worms, and minnows. Anglers use many different kinds of fake baits depending on what they hope to catch. Spinners, soft plastic lures, and diving, sinking, and surface plugs fill many anglers' tackle boxes. Baits such as jigs are often paired with natural baits such as worms to catch fish. Sharp tough and ready to go. No matter what you are fishing for, your gear takes a beating. It's important to check and maintain your equipment. Run your fingers over the last few feet of your line. It should feel smooth. If you detect a lot of roughness, 
follow your line until you reach a point where it feels smooth. Cut the bad line off. Chewed up line will easily snap. You don't want a northern pike to swim off with your favorite lure because you were fishing with bad line. And if you're angling for a fish that can cut line with its teeth, it's a good idea to protect your line and your bait by using a leader. Hooks will bend as you use them. You can bend a hook back into place with a pair of pliers. A bent hook won't hook a fish as well as a straight hook. You don't want your fish to slip off during a fight. Hooks also get dull over time and need to be sharpened. Nets, stringers, and pliers are just a handful of items in your tackle box to keep an eye on. They are used often and tend to wear out. We have another fun fact down here. Rods can also take a beating and may need attention. Grips may need to be rewrapped and guides may need replacing. Missing guides can cause the line to rub against your rod. Always replace broken guides so your rod performs well. Chapter 3. Fishing Safety Making sure your equipment is well cared for and working proper, properly also helps keep you safe. Safety is a big concern for anglers. Safety Equipment Most anglers spend some time fishing from a boat. Anytime you're in a boat, it's important to wear a life jacket. Sometimes it's the law. Choose a life jacket that fits you well and wear it every time you are out on the water. Replace it when it wears out or if you outgrow it. A life jacket could save your life. Hats, lightweight, long sleeve clothing, sunglasses, and boots are safety equipment too. Anglers spend a lot of time in the sun. They also spend time around biting bugs. You want to guard against sunburn and bug bites. Boots or even a sturdy pair of tennis shoes will protect your feet from rocky shorelines and misplaced sharp objects such as hooks. Hooks and hands. Getting hooked is pretty painful. Hooks are sharp and usually have a barb. When fishing near other people, be careful when casting. Double check to be sure people aren't going to get hit as you cast. Also, try not to yank your lure out of the water. When reeling it in, it could spring up and hit someone. Anglers need to protect their hands from some types of fish too. Fish often have sharp back fins and teeth. Most anglers handle fish barehanded. But fish gloves will help protect your hands. Gloves also help you get a better grip on a slippery fish so you can unhook them more quickly. Chapter four, conservation. Most anglers have great respect for fish and the environment. They show this respect by using catch and release and honoring fishing limits. Catch and release. Unhooking a fish quickly is important for each catch and release. A fish's gills take oxygen from the water. A fish out of water can't breathe. Most anglers catch and release fish they don't plan to eat. This helps to conserve the fish population. Some anglers try to unhook the fish while it's in the water. If that's not possible, the next best option is to get the fish back in the water as soon as possible. Handle the fish with care gripping it behind the gills. Don't squeeze too hard. If the fish is very tired, you may need to move it gently through the water to revive it. A fish that comes to the boat bleeding with damaged gills or that is hooked badly should be capped rather than tossed back. It's unlikely to survive. If you are catching and, re and keeping fish as part of your limit, Try to return a healthy one to the water and keep the hurt one. Remember that fishing only up to your limit is not just a good idea, it's also the law. Check with your State Department of Natural Resources to find out how many fish you can legally keep. You may also need to buy a license, depending on your area. Your State Department of Natural Resources 
may also have activities or fishing clubs for you to join. Fishing and the environment. When you are fishing, it's important to pay attention to how you affect the environment. Lead sinkers and fake baits containing lead are often small and easily misplaced. They can also be lost in the water when a line snaps. Loons, ducks, swans, and other water birds sometimes eat lost lead baits and sinkers. This gives them lead poisoning, which is bad. It's deadly. Always try to be responsible with your baits and equipment. Part of being a good angler is keeping the environment clean. Never leave any of your fishing gear behind. Littering with unwanted fishing gear such as bad line and broken lures can be even worse than littering with pop cans and candy wrappers. Animals can get tangled up in discarded line. Birds sometimes use the line when making their nest. Chicks can get caught in the line and die. Most anglers really love nature. They work hard to protect the environment. They help make sure that other anglers will also be able to enjoy fishing for years to come. This is our last fun fact. Biodegradable line is new to the sport of fishing. Normally, fishing line takes 600 years to break down. Biodegradable fishing line breaks down in just five years. This is Freshwater Fishing for Kids by Melanie Howard. I hope you enjoy some fishing this fall, and if you want a copy of this book, you should get it. It's great. Take care.